Well, good morning. I'm Dr. Ben Schultz. I'm a large animal veterinarian. I practice in uh, rural central Alberta, and I'm the founder of Treacher Incorporated. Treacher is a cloud-based platform um, designed for veterinary pharmacy businesses. It targets veterinary businesses in certain segments that are really starting to suffer from um, because they're stuck using analog systems for their pharmacy activities and for their prescribing activities. So the veterinary pharmacy market in North America, it, if we segment it by retail sales, it's about $11 billion market. No surprise, two thirds of that is small animal. The rest of this is what we call production animal medicine or food animal medicine. Treacher fits right in here. Uh, this is also where I practice. Kind of the, uh, the cow calf sector, which is what you think of as, as ranchers, this is rural practitioners, um, generally speaking, um, small feedlots, ranches, small dairy farms. Incidentally, this is also where most livestock production um, operations exist because there's many, many smaller farms as opposed to larger farms. It's a billion dollar in sales in North America a year. Um, and it's being done, this commerce is being done completely without the use of, of digital technology, which is not necessarily a problem. You know, so why it's been going along just fine forever without uh, without a digital solution. So why do we need to digitize this commerce? I mean, this isn't a reason, but uh, it's worth noting that it's possible now. <laughs> our uh, most of our ranchers have reliable access to to the internet on their phone, no matter where they are. Ten years ago, we probably wouldn't have been able to say that. A bigger reason is in this sector, this kind of rural veterinary sector. There's a pent up desire amongst practitioners to band together um, to consolidate their pharmacy so that they can compete with some of the bigger corporate players. This is essential to keeping these practices alive. Uh, there is consolidation that's happening in the veterinary world with small animal clinics being bought up by corporate owners. Doesn't really work very well in rural Alberta, but it does work to consolidate the pharmacies together so that they can be more competitive. But you can't do that unless you have a digital platform. The most pressing reason right now is that this segment of veterinary medicine in pharmacy, at least, has developed the problem, which is it's getting difficult to do this commerce. Um, we have this bottleneck. And the reason we have this inertia is because veterinarians in this sector are set up in a very old way. We prescribe very informally. And this may come as a surprise to those of you who are familiar with a human doctor or even a small animal doctor. but we give a lot of verbal guidance. You know, we sell a lot of antibiotics and medications to producers and then really rely on them, on their generational knowledge to identify sick animals and to treat them on farm. So it's very hands off. No surprise in 2018, Health Canada came along and said, yeah, that's the end of that. <laughs> and veterinary regulatory bodies really threw the hammer down and said, we need you guys to start operating more like doctors, more like small animal veterinarians. In June of 2023, the FDA is going to do exactly the same thing, and the Americans are going to have exactly the same problem that we have. What they want is no surprise. They want targeted prescribing. If you send antibiotics home to a rancher, they want documented standard operating procedures. They really want to take the control back to the veterinarian out of the hands of the rancher and have those decisions being made by the veterinarian. So that's fine, and I, I, you can call this red tape, you could call it progress, I happen to think it's probably a good shift. Unfortunately, in order for us to do it, we're gonna need three times the number of vets that we have, and we are on track to have half the number of veterinarians in, in 10 years. So we need technology to help us with this problem. So that's what Treacher does. Treacher is, uh, allows me to build standard operating procedures, which we call animal health protocols, these are basically recipes that ranchers can use to identify sick animals and to follow my instructions on how to use the medications that I've sold them. So Treacher does a couple of neat tricks. It takes those protocols and it turns them into prescriptions for me. Right now, there's really no written prescriptions existing in this sector, but Treacher digitizes this prescription. So now the producer can buy this medication on an online store or they can fill it in the clinic but it, it digitizes this entire, this entire activity. So what we get is we get compliance with today's regulations and tomorrow's. We open the door to having online commerce in this sector, which is gonna really loosen it up. 
we have the possibility that independent little practices can bind their, their, their pharmacies together so they can be more competitive. Um, producers and ranchers can be assured that they're going to have the medicine that they need, that they legitimately need. They don't have to worry about going to the vet clinic and, and, being, and, and, and leaving empty handed because people don't know what's going on in their operation. So we're gonna have better animal health, we're gonna have better animal welfare, and ultimately be much better stewards of these especially medically important antibiotics that we're using in food animal. Time to wrap up, please, Dr. Schultz. Business model is subscription-based. Um, there's a great opportunity for direct marketing in the platform. Um, and I'm looking for a five month more runway extension. I've got a year's worth of development into it, and I think it's gonna be 150,000 for that. That's all I had. Um, so I just have a quick question to, uh, to make sure our clarification, a uh, rancher can go onto your system, say, you know, my cow is coughing. Um, they can put in what they think it is. Then that will give them like the prescription for it. Or are you, is the vet involved and reviews it? Like, I wasn't sure where that happened. Sure. Yeah, no, the, the, uh, the veterinarian still goes to the ranch or will meet with them, um, generally has a very good idea of how their operation works, and they will design animal health protocols for the diseases that are expected on that farm. It's usually the same ones year to year, and basically the animal health protocol is a set of instructions that the producer will have on hand. And so those, um, those prescriptions are reviewed and made in advance. So no, if a producer will have access to the health protocol and they'll be able to view it on their phone, but they can't go in, say something to the teacher and then have it generate a prescription. These are all done in advance. All right, so in the spirit of forward thinking, um, cause I noticed that you mentioned that you're trying to solve or be relevant now and in the future. And I know a shift in the agriculture industry is like smart farming techniques where um, issues relating with your livestock can be tracked and um, you can basically cut out the person who is coming and diagnosing um, these things. Like, are there plans to integrate your platform with such technology that is basically here already? And how does that um, affect your bottom line in terms of like, um, you know, profitability or relevance. So if I, if I understand your question, you're, you're pointing to some platforms or some technology that exists already. TELUS Agriculture would be one good example of that, um, who has bought feedlot health services and herd tracks health management. Those, uh, those platforms are um, really heavily used in the feedlot sector. So there's, um, those are bigger operations and generally speaking, operate from a building, from a fixed location, um, full of people who are managing big operations and doing a lot of data, data analysis and really implementing smart farming. In the ranching sector, producers don't, they don't have time for that. What they want is they want, I have a sick animal. What did my veterinarian say again on how to treat this? You know, Treacher can show them videos and pictures on how to identify a sick animal. And, you know, then they go ahead and treat it. They're not looking for, you know, more work to do or a whole bunch of data input to do at the end of the day. So it's, it's, uh, it's, I think that it will be integrated into um, smart agriculture. My, one of my exit strategies is to be bought by TELUS Agriculture eventually. Um, but it's specifically designed to do very narrow thing. How do I treat this animal, you know, and then provide the medications that are needed for that. The veterinarian is still involved in consulting with that farm, still involved in disease outbreaks that are outside the norm. Um, but for general things that happen every year, this is, this, this really frees up veterinarians time. So is your, is your customer the rancher? Um, the rural vet or both? The, the customer is, is both, but I think demand is driven by the, by the rancher, by the producer, because they're the ones that are having problems with getting access to veterinary care. Um, the veterinarian is, uh, the, the platform saves veterinarians a ton of time 
So they're, they're in it because it saves them time, saves them phone calls, makes it easier for them to run their business. Ranchers are in it because it makes it easier for them to get access to the medications that they need. So but both the rancher and the vet would pay you. Like they would both pay to use the platform. No, I, I, but I think that, uh, <clears throat> I think it would make sense to charge the veterinary clinic for the number of users that they have in their clinic. So like the number of ranchers that they're signing up. Um, so basically the bill would go to the vet clinic and they would pay the subscription fee. And then they can pass that, that onto their ranchers if they want, or they can, you know, include it as a, as part of their service to them. Um, you had responded to me that producers don't have time for the strategy used by smart farming techniques. Could you elaborate on that a little bit for me? Like what aspect of the far smart farming technique is time consuming or does not fit into the general modus operandi of um, a small farmer or producer? <clears throat> yeah. So there, there is a there there is one platform on the market that uh, it's called herd tracks uh, i believe it's owned by telus agriculture and um it's been around for for a while probably 10 years now maybe more um, i think the users are in the hundreds of, of that platform <clears throat> and it really the users who are who are doing that are you know the platform is trying to encompass the whole farm. So looking at weight gain, looking at, um, you know, problems with dystocia and which cows have been <clears throat> have had trouble calving, you know, which calves have produced the most money. It handles feeding and nutrition and, you know, kind of the whole, the whole system. And most, the, the, the common cliche is that most pr cattle producers already know how to farm better than they can. Most of them do not have time to sit down, you know, for an hour a day and enter in a bunch of data into the platform, which is why there's <clears throat> hundreds of users on that platform instead of tens of thousands. You know, there are in Canada, there are 36,000 livestock operations. And in the United States, you can multiply that by 15. What producers, what, what makes Treacher different is that it's it's very focused. It's just focused on how do I treat this sick animal? You know, what, what are my veterinarian's instructions on how to deal with this sick animal? And I think we get a lot of phone calls in our practice, which by the way, we don't get paid for because we don't charge for consultation over the phone in, in this industry. Producers phoning up and saying, Hey, I've got this calf. It's got a snotty nose. What do I do? You know, that's really what they're, that's really what my customers are telling me they want. They don't want, a whole bunch of extra work, you know, on their computer every day because they're exhausted when they go in. They want something on their phone that helps them do their job. Have you tested your platform with like a small focus group? <clears throat> uh, I, I have not because uh, there is an existing platform that is uh, that's right now proprietary. So there is a veterinary group, a veterinary a group of veterinary practices that have a rudimentary platform that's that's uh, that does something similar. It's not available on the market to other veterinarians. They use it proprietarily in their own practice. And when I go, <clears throat> when I go to, uh, I also full disclosure am trying to consolidate veterinary pharmacies. And when I approach a veterinary clinic, the first thing they ask me is, "Do you have an animal health protocol platform?" You know, so their their customers are demanding this. Veterinary uh, ranchers are are demanding this. This is a response to an existing demand.